Hey there, YouTubers. Shaman Hawk here for Shamanic Lodge. Check out this beautiful forest I'm in. It's right outside of Cluj, Napoca, Romania. Cluj, Napoca is supposed to be the heart of Transylvania. Yes, my American friends, there is actually a place called Transylvania, and I'm there. So I got this other uh, Facebook ban, Fedbook ban. <clears throat> for another 30 days starting today it's an interesting thing with that you know people <laughs> they have like what are you gonna do you know uh, maybe come out in the forest more but seriously you know I, I we Osha and I spend a lot of time out here it's really pretty brush pile somebody built the fort gypsy fort you know so since I'm not on Fedbook have to be more on YouTube. But the other interesting thing about that I was thinking this morning is that, you know, it we get tied up in a social media thing. You know, it, it's convenient. You know, the whole messenger thing, you can make calls around the world and all that. As long as you follow the community standards. Facebook and community standards, it's almost like an oxymoron, right? Anyway. You know, they can sell our information, they can uh, give away anything they want about us. You know, we, we agree to that. If you uh, do anything over with somebody else, they get rights to whatever you create. You know, but make a comment that they don't quite agree with and you're back in like fed book timeout. But, you know, when Orsi and I spent three weeks on the beach in Bulgaria, you know, it was an interesting thing that you can feel yourself really starting to tune back into being a real human, you know, away from nature and things like that. I think this means this tree is finished soon. It's kind of sad. <clears throat> but in doing that, you know, I looked at it, it's like, well, is it the energy that we, you know, kind of get away from that lets us connect back with nature or... Or is it the programming that we get so used to uh, being in the social media thing that our mind's still running that program and it takes a, a week to shut down, you know? But when I look out the window of places in the city, it's just like everybody's got the phone to their face. I don't have phone service. I mean, i got to get to some place with an Internet. and Usually when I leave the flat, you know, I don't have my phone on me. That probably really bothers NSA and stuff. <laughs> Oh my God, he might still be at the flat. He could be walking around or something. But I saw this other little video on, um, on Facebook <laughs> about how China, you know, they, they score you by your phone use. And if you buy too much alcohol, you get bad points or you can't buy a plane ticket or something someplace. And then the same week, I saw that Apple gives you a trust score, you know. So think about it. Somebody's actually judging you. <laughs> We're supposed to be non-judgmental, right? Judging you by the use of your phone, you know, and then like uh, punishing you for your opinions, your purchases, and things like that. And that's how controlled we're becoming, you know, bit by bit. And of course, these kids now, they get this phone. You know, I was telling Orsi today that when I was a kid, uh, coming back from Australia, the we wanted to talk to somebody on the other side of the world. The bargain was an aerogram. That's a piece of paper that you get one, one you could write one letter on it, and then you could uh, fold it up and it became the envelope from the United States to Australia for 25 cents. Anyway, so I think it's, you know, I talk about a lot about. Uh, deprogramming and stuff you know of what we run through our head but it's also the deprogram from our social media and technology you know it's uh we come out here you know to take a break from all that i'm going to show you our little campsite to kind of spread in this forest gorgeous you know uh, people come through here and they the policy is take your trash with you i love that you know this is our little sacred area. We turn this around. 
I like to come out and do like I did as a kid, you know, build little tarp forts and whatever, but bought a couple new tarps and uh, just playing with them in configuration. This is where our tent usually sits, and there's Orsi playing with the fire. <laughs> we wanted to come back and just give give things away, you know, things we made, and, you know, little gifts. You know, here she is, if I line that up right, you know, seeds for the birds and squirrels and things, things we brought from other places, seashells and stones bring them back to honor our little our little nest here we put up this little fence keeps the uh, the sheep from flying through here keeps the drunk Goa people from stumbling all over us and uh, anyways it, it might be a while before we come back here we're gonna go to Germany in a few days uh, that's for three weeks and then go explore the country of Georgia for a month. Go back to Germany for a week and then back to the USA. Back to Hawkins Horse Haven and Red Boiling Springs, Tennessee. So, until then. Uh, oh, let me show you something. I'm going to start doing these little things about camping and outside living and stuff like that. You know, tarps are cheap. They're strong. Rope is cheap and very useful. Excuse me for juggling this thing around. I don't have my selfie stick. But anyways, using tarps and ropes like that, you can do all kinds of shelters. I'm going to be doing some more videos on that stuff. You know, <clears throat> and you can watch Orsi learn knots. That's always fun. And fire building. But anyway, you know, it's a good to get out into nature as much as possible. You know, even if you're just doing something like this, sitting, hanging out. You can still hear the traffic sounds from here. We hear sirens and people and whatnot. But still, it's just a little bit, you know, of what we hear in the background noise. But we get to enjoy all this. You know, it's just beautiful. And people can come here. And camp out. Down there is a bunch of trash piles. That seems to be a global issue. No matter where you go, people will do that. You know. Um, but for the most part, people come here. at different campfire sites. They pick up their stuff as they go. But you know, I want to make another comment about something like this. Is This is land in Romania. Okay, and you're, like I said, outside Cluj, Napoca. And she and I have been coming up here for two... Or it's the second year we've been coming up here. And that's kind of freedom that I don't have in the States. You know, um, when she was in Tennessee uh, this past spring, she's like, oh, can we go and camp? I'm like, no, somebody owns that and there'll be a problem and things. You know, when we went to Vama Vike in the Black Sea Beach last year, we could just walk up and camp on the beach for a week. That's freedom. I can't do that in the United States. And then this year, it's back in uh, August, you know, we went in and uh, camped out in Bulgaria. We walked from Bamabike into Bulgaria, camped out on the beach for three weeks. Didn't ask anybody, didn't talk to the permission. Lots and lots of people were doing it, you know. There's no area where you need to have clothes or don't. They're kind of like your beach and you don't, have clothes on, no big deal, not like in the States. Again, freedom. So people ask me why I spend so much time over here. And I've told the customs and border people in the United States, I feel like I have more freedom in the Eastern Bloc of Europe than I do in my own country, land of the free, you know. But anyway, time to get going. She's gonna take a trip. We, I gotta finish getting ready for a trip to Germany and Georgia. But I'll send up another video here shortly. Catch y'all later.